So today we are going to be tearing up some cloths here and let's get into it. So let's take a simple primitive. Uh, I'm going to start off by taking a simple cube here and I'm going to scale this down here and let's make it something like this. So I'm going to go to my front view, hit 4 on your keyboard, hit X to kind of snap it towards the grid and I'm going to control D this, simply duplicate this and bring this a little lower. To somewhere right about there and we have two frames here so i can select one of my uh, simple plane here and we'll make this cloth so if you hit g on your keyboard you can snap it on every 15 degrees and i'm going to scale this up first and uh, right about there let me just check so somewhere right about there is perfect and let's increase the subdivision to 30 and 30 i think that should be fine and let's go into the FX here and I'm going to make this end cloth and this one to passive collider and this one to passive collider as well. So if I play this now the cloth falls as usual and I'm going to right click on my cloth and go to vertices and I can come over here I can select my points here I'm going to lower this down just a bit and I can select my primitive here by simply holding shift on my keyboard and I'm going to go to my constraint here and I'm going to say point to surface. So if you look closely here you'll notice some guides are attaching towards the overall primitive here and that means uh, the primitive is holding we have added a constraint that's going to hold this cloth. So if I want to turn on my extreme mode you can see these guidelines over here. So I'm going to do the same with the cloth on the bottom uh, the bottom points. So let's go down and let's change the vertices just a bit to somewhere right about there and then we can hold shift and select this guy and go to constrain and point to surface so there we go so if we select this now we have something like this i think the cloth is overall just bigger so i can increase the strength if i want to get rid of this but i think that's completely fine but i think the strength should help with this so let's go to the dynamic properties here and if I play this now, increase the strength, yeah, so that fix, fixes that. So I'm going to leave the strength to about 50. I want some wrinkly surface going on, so I'm going to keep it like that. The next thing I want to do is select a simple sphere and let's scale this down, bring this out. And I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to simply keyframe this right now. You can also go to your channel box and simply hit right click on and click on key selected. And I'm going to go towards the 30 frame or maybe 40. 30 is fine and I'm going to hit S again to hold it over there and about 50 this guy will just shoot through here and S. Obviously this is not going to collide because this is not a passive collider so let's make this as a passive collider and from here if I play this now it's moving. But the thing is the overall polygon looks pretty rigid and the reason is because we haven't set any uh, tearing, tearing kind of constraints. So I'm going to select this guy. You can make this whole as a tearable surface but I won't suggest that because that will just make everything rip apart and that doesn't look that good. So I'm going to select my brush over here and I'm just going to hit B on my keyboard and left click and drag to make my brush a little bigger. And what I can do is just spray a paint kind of tearing cloth kind of paint here. Now the area that we have painted here, this is going to be torn apart completely. So I can go to my end constraint and I'm going to say terrible surface. So instantly you will see these points. If the points are too buggy for you, if you want to just get rid of the points over here, you can simply go to the outliner and you can select your constraint. And what you can do is you can simply turn off your display connection, but I like to keep it on sometimes. That just helps with the overall thing. And let's play this now. All right. So now as you can see it kind of turns the whole cloth apart and this looks pretty good. So I can go back here and pretty much increase the scale of this and uh, obviously we have to increase the scale and hit keyframe again because we have added some keyframes. So I'm going to scale this up and uh, let's scale this up and hit S. All right. So I think. All right, so we have some bigger cloth tearing apart thing going on. So this looks pretty nice now. So you can do some tearing up things with this. This is pretty interesting. You can do a similar thing where if you don't want to collide this with a something else surface or a passive collider, what you can do is simply take a simple cube here. And um, let me just this here and 
let's bring this over here and I'm going to make this something like this again the same kind of frame thing and I'm going to control D this and bring this down to right about there and let's take a plane G on your keyboard and let's hit 4 to make sure you're in the wireframe mode so you can just see a little better and so we have something like this I'm going to increase my divisions on this because as you know the cloth surface requires higher subdivision to work perfectly so I'm going to make this end cloth select this guy make this as a passive collider this one as a passive collider as well just make sure you check the overall sim here all right looks perfect so right click on your primitive and make this cloth and make this uh, vertices and I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and select this and constrain point to surface select this one do the same point to surface select this guy and we can make this as a point to surface as well so we have two constraints now uh, this setup is similar to the previous one but this time what we are going to do is select this guy and I'm going to hit S on my keyboard and about uh, maybe like a 50 frames or let's make it 60 this guy is going to go up and let's hit s on my keyboard so if i play this now as you can see it stretches the overall cloth here this looks pretty stretchy here we can play around with more things like we can add some uh, rigidness and stretch resistance how much it's going to stretch we can restrict that uh, but instead what we are going to do is select our paintbrush here and i'm just going to simply paint some things over here and i'm going to say terrible surface now if I play this now all right so there you go so now you have nice cloth tearing apart going on so this looks pretty nice so you can uh, pretty much create different kinds of thing if you uh, somehow mess up the overall tearing part you can simply go to your constraint and delete this you can even rename your uh, constraints here so just so it's easier to understand so what you can do is simply get rid of the constraint and you can select your cloth again and you can pretty much create a new kind of look or whatever so I have something like this now I can go to end constraint and I can make this terrible surface again and now you can see because of the earlier constraint we have some kind of problem going on so I'm going to hit play on my keyboard and this is what happens when you you reuse the overall terrible surface kind of thing uh, so I'm going to get rid of this plane here okay so let's select a new cloth here so I'm going to create a new cloth here and uh, let's call this cloth and uh, let's hit G on the keyboard rotate this and let's adjust this quickly so I'm going to scale this up to I think right about there is fine and let's increase the subdivision to maybe like a 50 and 50 here and I'm going to go to the vertices and this is like I guess all right so it was 1050 so that was not good at all so I'm going to select this guy uh, but before doing that we have to make sure this is the end cloth so I'm going to go to my end cloth create end cloth and I'm going to select this again and this guy and let's make sure this is a pointer surface let's do the same with the bottom one and end constraint and point to surface perfect so now if I play this we have something like this so let's uh, create a terrible surface again I'm going to select this guy and I'm going to make before doing that let's create the overall I'm going to go to the object mode and select just one word is because we ha already had that constraint selected all right so I'm going to paint over this kind of thing something like this and go to end constraint and terrible surface so there we go and if I play this now you see something like this so now you have nice cloth tearing apart thing going on you can simply go to the simple connection collider here and you can simply turn off the display to see your cloths in even better so you can catch this now if you want you can simply go to end catch create new catch and an object and you can pretty much play this smoothly in your viewport so this is a nice uh, dynamic simulation you can create some amazing stuff with this so i'm going to go to my new scene here and let's take a simple sphere and uh, you can bring this up scale this up let's make sure this is a passive collider and uh, i'm going to increase the subdivision to 40 and 40 here and if i play this now this falls exactly how it's supposed to be uh, but instead what i'm going to do is go to my nucleus and i'm going to say i want zero gravity so this guy is going to stay there all right 
and the next thing I'm going to do is simply take another sphere that will be my collider and select this over here and I'm going to hit S on my keyboard and about in 30 frames this guy crushes this guy over here so we have something like this so this will be my passive collider and I'm going to select this and I'm going to paint something here here let's make the brush a little bigger and all around here something like this as well and let's make this terrible surface so now if I play this all right so you have something like this going on so you can create some amazing stuff with this the only thing is that you need more subdivisions for your cloth right now if I look closely towards my cloth you can see some rigidness going on on the overall areas here you can hit three on your keyboard to make that smooth and go away uh, but I highly suggest making this a pretty high subdivision geometry because that will just help you the cloth to, to look a little bit more natural that's what I say because uh, right now we have less polygons and this was as I said this is just for the demonstration purpose but you get the idea so make sure you have higher subdivisions on your geometry so at the end this is just for the overall trial purpose but if you're doing the final sim make sure you uh, increase your subdivision and then you can pretty much catch the whole thing and then you can render this but for the trial I think we like to we can keep it like this so let's get into a new scene and um, I'm going to take a simple torus here this is another example that you can how you can use this thing so I'm going to simply hit ctrl D on my keyboard I'm going to select this guy over here and I'm going to make this about 60 and 60 I think and I'm going to increase this all right uh, let me just change the overall section radius on this 2.6 and that will just help with the overall design so we have a collider sphere uh, sorry torus which is inside and then we have the other one which is outside so i'm going to select the inside one let's call this inside let's call it outside so i'm going to select the inside one i'm going to go to my end cloth make that passive collider and this guy to an end cloth all right so actually we have done the opposite i think the renaming process all right so this is the inside one all right my bad so this is the out and I'm going to select this and cloth this one passive collider there we go if I play this we have something like this I'm going to get off of my x-ray mode here and again for the overall gravity mode here I'm going to do one thing uh, which is get rid of the overall gravity here I'm going to add some wind here to get something interesting here so we have something like this and I'm going to simply select this surface here go to my paint brush here and I'm just going to select some points. I think the brush is too big for this. And just randomly I'm going to select something. Something like this. And let's make that as a terrible surface here. And from here, if I play this now, it's not going to break till now because the wind is not that strong. But what we can do is we can go to my nucleus here and uh, I'm going to keep the air density to 1.2 instead of 1 and I'm going to increase this to maybe like a 15 here. And if I play this now, this should add some tension to the overall torus here. So I'm going to increase, keep increasing my wind here until this guy breaks apart. Maybe like 25 and then let's add some noise into this. So go to the first frame and let's see now. Alright, so far so good. It's not breaking apart. I'm going to increase the overall strength here. And now I see some polygons distorting over here. I'm going to make this 50 and let's go back. And now you see some cloth tearing apart. Alright, so there we go. So you just have to do some trial and error with how much uh, you can say surface is going to hold. Now you can always go back and go to your constraint and you can change how much max distance there is to the overall connection method. And you can also reduce or increase the overall glue strength that this terrible surface has with the overall connection here so you can manage that as well if you don't want to play around with the overall wind if you don't want to play go with that trial and error kind of thing so you can play around with that as well so i think the overall sim looks pretty good the overall scene is pretty nice and overall so you can create this kind of stuff as well so totally up to you but if you are going to do this make sure you have a high dense geometry with your overall primitive and I think you'll be good to go. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you got something out of this and create some amazing dynamic clock tearing kind of scene. And if you do create something out of it, let me know. I'll be happy to see it. And with that, I'll see you on the next one.